Hello, my multivariable calculus students. This year back on the mic here. My son coughing in the background for ambiance. Um, we are going to talk today about um, the idea of finding maxes and mins with a constraint. And you have done this before last year in AP Calculus when you talked about optimization. You had two equations. One was fixed, one that you wanted to optimize. And the idea is that you plug one into the other one. Um, so let's do an example like that. So let's say we're going to find the point on, uh, so let's call that point uh, X, Y, Z. And we're going to find the point closest to the origin on uh, 2x plus y minus z minus 5 is 0. So we want to find the point on this plane closest to the origin. So we want to minimize the distance from the plane to the origin. So if we think about the vector from the origin to the point, um, we want to find the magnitude of this, which is going to be the square root of x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared plus z whoop, minus 0 squared. So this is rad x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And if we want to minimize this, um, subject to the constraint that 2x plus y minus z minus 5 is 0. So this has a minimum whenever f of x, y, z is x squared plus y squared plus z squared has a minimum. The idea here being that I can minimize what's under the square root which would minimize the whole thing and not have to keep those square roots as we learned on our last worksheet. So we want to minimize this and our constraint is 2x plus, oops, y minus z minus five is zero. This is our constraint. Um, and so in order to do this, we have some we can solve this for z. So zoop, z is going to be uh, 2x plus y minus 5 plus 0. And so we want to find um, the points x, y, where my function is instead of being in terms of x, y, and z, is in terms of x, y, and 2x plus y minus 5. So we can make a function h of x, y, 2x plus y minus 5 and sub that into here. So we get uh, x squared plus y squared plus this whole thing squared, 2x plus y minus 5 squared. So the domain of this function is going to be the entire xy plane. And I can use my partial derivatives to find where any maxes and mins occur. So if I find my gradient function or my partial with respect to x, I get 2x plus 2 times 2x plus y minus 5 all times 2. And I'm going to set that equal to 0. And then I'm going to find my partial with respect to y, which is going to be 2y plus, this is my chain rule here, my 2 comes down in front, inside stays the same, to the first power, times the derivative of the inside here, which is 1, and set this equal to 0. So now, if I simplify this, I get 2x plus 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8, so I get 10x plus 2y times 2, which is 4y, and 5 times 2 times 2, so is equal to 20. And then doing the second, same thing on the bottom, I get 4x 
plus 2y plus 2y is plus 4y is equal to, my constants give me negative 10, so when I kick that on the other side, I get positive 10. So now I have a good old um, two equations, two unknowns. So if I solve this, and um, you can see I can pretty easily just add these two together, I get 14x equals 30, x equals 30 over 14, which is four. That's not gonna work. I need to subtract them. Who's in charge here? So 10 minus four is six x. Four y minus four y is zero. 20 minus 10 is 10. So x equals 10 over six or five over three. If I then whew, plug this into either one of these, I get four, oh my gosh, so I get four x, so four times five thirds plus four y equals 10 minus 20 thirds uh, divided by four, so y is five over six. So, um, <clears throat> To find my z coordinate now, whoop, I'm going to have to um, look at my constraint. So where was that? Z is equal to 2x plus y minus 5. So z is equal to 2x plus y minus 5, which is 2 times x plus y minus five, which if I make, <laughs> excuse me, is 26 plus five, six, is 25, six minus 30, so I get negative five, six. So um, I can see that my point P is five thirds, five, six, negative five, six. And if you want to know whether you have a max or a min, um, we can look at my mixed partials uh, within here and see that I will definitely um, figure out where I will um, minimize. So this is a long way of going through how to uh, find a constraint. And so you can see that this worked out actually pretty relatively nicely here. And I'm gonna do another example where it's not gonna work out quite so easily. And I'm gonna show you an easier way than sort of back solving all of that algebra. And so we're going to find the point P, again, we'll call it X, Y, Z, on uh, X squared minus Z squared minus one is zero, closest to the origin. Now, we know what this looks like. Um, it looks like a hyperbola and it looks like a hyperbola. So this is a hyperbolic cylinder. And I wanna find the point on this hyperbolic cylinder closest to the origin. So what I want you to picture is sort of at the origin, you have a sphere centered at the origin. And we're gonna keep growing that sphere and growing that sphere until that sphere just touches the cylinder. So we want to think of like a bubble expanding, right? And as this bubble gets bigger, eventually this bubble will just touch this. And I wanna find that point of tangency on the sphere and the hyperbolic cylinder. And what I know is that at the point where the sphere and the hyperbolic cylinder just touch, right, I know that they have the same tangent plane because the tangent plane to the sphere and the tangent would be the same as the tangent plane to the hyperbolic cylinder, and they have the same uh, normal line. So if I look at my sphere, 
again, my sphere is growing. I don't know how big that sphere is gonna be. I'm gonna say that my function, uh, we're gonna have some f of x, y, and z is gonna be x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus a squared. So this is just writing it as a level curve. And then I have my g of x, y, z, that's my hyperbolic cylinder. My hyperbolic cylinder is going to be x squared minus z squared minus 1 minus 0. And so if I have the same tangent plane, then I know that del f is parallel to del g, or that their gradients are scalar multiples. And we're going to let that scalar, this is a lambda, stand in for that scalar multiple. And that is called the method of Lagrange multipliers, which is where we list, say that there is some scalar multiple and we've run out of letters in the English language, so we're just gonna use this adorable little lambda to stand in for that scalar. So del F is some lambda times del G, which means if I actually take the partial with respect to X, so I have two X I hat, plus 2yj hat plus 2zk hat is equal to some lambda times my del g, which is 2xi hat, I have no j hats, minus 2zk hat. So any point of tangency between the sphere and the hyperbolic cylinder will solve this system, which means that this is equal to this. So my i hat components are equal. So 2x is lambda 2x, 2y is 0, and 2z is lambda times negative 2z. So in order to lie on x squared minus z squared minus 1 is 0, do we agree that x can't be 0? So that means that 2x equals lambda 2x means that lambda is 1. This algebraically, x equals zero would solve it, but this would not solve this. I cannot have zero minus something minus something equal to zero. So in order for this to be true, lambda is one. And if lambda is one, we've already have that y is zero, then two z <laughs> equals negative two z. Well, this can only be true if z is zero. So, if y is zero and z is zero, and I know that x squared minus z squared minus one equals zero, so x squared minus zero squared minus one is zero, x is plus or minus one. So I get the point plus or minus one, zero, zero. So I get really two points that solve this. And we're going to go through another video that talks about um, this method and its actual theorem.